This year in science class, we have spent a lot of time learning about our atmosphere and more specifically, global climate change. To think that our Earth is in peril and there is so little being done about it, it is scary. The effects are already being felt worldwide. So we asked ourselves, what can we do as teenagers to bring awareness to this issue and help people who are already feeling the effects of global climate change? Let's start by answering a few questions. What causes global climate change? Simply put, humans' re reliance on artificial things, including all the things that make us comfortable at home, has contributed immensely to the emissions of more greenhouse gases than before. These gases in the atmosphere have trapped more heat on the Earth's surface and made it warmer. This is called global warming. You and I also produce other global greenhouse gases in a way, by the things we use at home. Everything humans have at home or workplace need need power to work. This power comes from burning fossil fuels and other natural sources. The more fossil fuels are burnt, the more are produced into the atmosphere. This is not very good as we are all contributing to the to global warming and climate change. This is a problem. Is it possible to stop global climate change? Not entirely, but it should be possible to stop the worst effects of global climate change. The climate reacts slowly to all the carbon dioxide we've been adding to the atmosphere. It will take decades or even hundreds of years for the full effect of fossil fuels we already burned to be felt. So it isn't pos possible to fully stop climate change. But most scientists think it um, will be possible to avoid the worst effects of global climate change. We have a short time in which to act. If we can hold emissions down and then gradually eliminate them, then we should be able to prevent the really bad scenarios that the scientists are warning us about. What are some of the effects of climate change? There are many effects of global climate change that we are already experiencing and others that will become more serious in years to come. For example, melting Arctic ice, rising sea levels, more extreme weather, destruction of ecosystems and natural habitat, droughts flood and floods, and increasing ocean acidity, just to name a few. Heat waves are hard for everyone, but for infants, young children, the elderly, and people who are already sick, this can be extremely dangerous. Extreme heat can cause illnesses such as heat cramps, heat stroke, and even death. In 2003, Heat wave in Europe caused about 50,000 deaths. And in 1995, heat wave in Chicago caused more than 600 deaths. In fact, heat waves cause more deaths in the United States every year than hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and earthquakes combined. One big concern is the new Zika virus, a deadly disease spread by mosquitoes in many hot, humid parts of the world like South America. The Zika virus transmitted by the same mosquito as dung fever has spread with alarming speeds throughout South and Central America. And scientists in Brazil suspect that global warming is making this problem even worse. Although the virus usually causes only mild symptoms and often passed undetected, it has been associated with surge in a number of cases of babies born with microcephaly, which can cause brain damage. 24 countries in South and Central America have reported cases of microcephaly, and in the spread of viruses that is attribu attributed by scientists to global warming. Last year was the hottest on record. Abnormal war warming of the Pacific caused by El Nino contributed to this. Scientists have learned that the number of mosquitoes is increasing. Their, act their area of activity is increasing and contact with populations who have never before had contact with dung and Zika is increasing. They have noticed that dung has spread to areas more previously too cold for it, like the south of the country. In colder regions, the mosquito has a shorter life, but it can still spread dung and Zika. Some scientists have a connection between global warming and the spread of Zika. Some scientists warn that the condition connection between global warming and the spread of Zika is still questionable. What is clear is that 2015 and 2016 represent an increased, uh, increased risk because of high temperatures and rainfall that has been observed. The government of Brazil and other nations are doing everything in their power to stop the spread of this disease, Detri distributing mosquito repellent and mosquito nets to pregnant women is a huge priority and one that we want to help with. A girl from Shark Tank came and talked to us about her bug spray that she made and she helped us make four different kinds of bug sprays. 
Um, one was lemon vanilla lavender, one was peppermint vanilla clove, one was cedar orange, and one was eucalyptus lemongrass. And um, we sold them, we sold 48 yeah. to our com in our community, and we take the proceeds and we donate, um, we buy bug spray and we donate them to um, an organization in South America and then the organization gives them to people in South America in need that are affected by Zika virus. We research what ingredients kill and repel mosquitoes the best. We then purchased them and got to our lab station and found, we figured out four different flavors that we both, we all thought smelled and worked the best. We sold our product at drop off and pick up. We got lots of questions from many people and it only took us three days to run out of all of our bug spray. After much research, we found out that the people that are at most risk are the expecting mothers in poor areas. A parent helped us get in touch with a person who is going to give us all the details to send bug spray to, an air, to a place that expecting mothers that are at an increased risk at getting Zika R. We're going to give this bug spray to them to hopefully change their chances of getting Zika. This, when we do send it there, we are hoping that this project will make a mark on the community and in the world. My company was started because um, my business partner's dog got sick one day and she didn't know why. She took her to the vet. The vet didn't know why. She took her to another vet. They didn't know why. And ultimately, after doing some blood tests, they realized that she had pesticide poisoning. She had no idea that pesticides were in the drops that she was using to protect her dog. She thought she was doing something to keep her safe, but didn't realize that it was actually a neurotoxic chemical because you have to do something because you're not going to live with bugs. Um, she was told that she should put her dog to sleep, but I'm sure that you guys know she couldn't do that. So she took her home to nurse her back to health, and in the process, she cleaned up her house to make sure she didn't have any chemicals there. And that's when she realized that she had a lot of pesticides in her house. So not only the plant tick control, but the stuff she had in her sink to kill um, the ants in the kitchen, the ants in the yard, roaches, spiders, um, mosquitoes, all the stuff that we don't want to live with. And so once she learned that, she couldn't unlearn it. And she wanted to invent a way that you could kill bugs without killing toxic chemicals. Did you guys know that nature has ways to manage bugs that they use to protect themselves, like trees and plants? Uh, I thought that you were going to, like, I thought you were going to say that other animals kill the bugs, so like, put like an ant eater in their kitchen. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or, like, or like a ladybug. That, that is very true. Ladybug. Yeah. Did the dog survive? Right? She did. Yeah. Yep. Yay. She was 10 years old and she lived for six more years. Whoa. 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 Well, yeah. My dog lived for six more years. Oh. Yeah, my dog was six years. That's great. Yeah. That's a really long life. So Stephanie did some research, that's my, my business partner and the founder of our company, and she learned that there are ways that you can kill bugs without using chemicals, and they just work differently. And so we're going to make some stuff today that will we'll do that. Um, but does anybody have a cedar chest in their house? Or maybe their grandma has a cedar chest, or maybe a cedar closet? Hmm? Oh, there you go. I think my cousin has a cedar closet. Okay. So bugs hate cedar. That's why we put stuff in closets that have cedar in them so that the moths don't eat them. So what if you could use stuff you already know bugs hate but is, is natural and use that to keep the bugs away? Does that sound like a better idea? So that's what we do. We use things that nature gives us to fight bugs so that we don't have to use chemicals. Um, 
We make products that you can use on your skin for insect repellent, like we're going to make today. We use products you can use around your house to kill bugs. We make products you can use outside your house to kill bugs. And we use make products for dogs and cats to keep fleas and ticks away. And they're so safe that you can eat them, but they don't taste very good, so you probably should not. <laughs> Just one thing that I was wondering, you said that a pesticide is anything that can kill a bug. Yeah. How, how is what you make different? It's, it's an organic pesticide. That is a great question. Okay. So we make what are called biopesticides. 